Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to a brand new installment of Shane's World, the show where we talk about the latest and greatest in movie and television news. We got Moon Knight episode 4 thoughts today. Thoughts on the Northman and its box office success so far. Leprechaun news. Never thought I'd talk about that on the show and much more, so stay tuned right after this. Yes, that's right. We're going to start off with some Moon Knight conversation, as I usually do a Moon Knight recap review show on Wednesdays, but last week I did not have the time, so I'm going to give some brief thoughts on last week's episode here on Shane's World before Episode 5 comes out this upcoming Wednesday. I thought Episode 4 was really good, although I'm starting to feel like I'm kind of missing Moon Knight. You know, he's we keep getting morsels of him in the suit kicking ass, but we haven't gotten a ton of him so far, and I don't, I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's a budget restriction. I don't know if it's just the story they're telling, but I kind of want some more Moon Knight. I hope in episode five and six we get more of him in the suit. Just doing something. So far, it's a lot of Mark and Steven arguing, and I do really love this show so far. I really do, but that's just like my one nitpicky thing is I wish there was a little bit more Moon Knight in this, sh this episode, especially the, the second half definitely opens it up to some interesting possibilities for episode five and six it leaves you questioning what's going on in the show what is real what's going on just really what the hell's going on there's a new god introduced in this episode we're going to learn more about her in episode five i'm assuming because they basically they don't say anything about her she just pops up at the end and i'm curious to see if they introduced a new god because possibly gore the god butcher is going to come in and take out some of them to set up thor uh, yeah, Thor, that's who he is. I was gonna say Doctor Strange, but Gore's and Thor. But I'm curious to see. I'm also curious to see this show ends a day before Doctor Strange releases in theaters, so I'm curious to see if it ties in there at all. I, mean, I still think it's gonna tie into Shang-Chi somehow with artifacts and whatnot. I'm curious to see if Jake Lockley shows up, because they didn't really tease that too much in this episode. They were running through the asylum and the, uh, one sarcophagus was shaking a lot of people think that's jake lockley whether he gets introduced this week or not we'll have to wait and see but yeah i thought this was a really good episode i just want more moon knight i thought this was a really good performance by the girl that plays layla in the show in this episode her and ethan Hawke's scene was damn fantastic and there were some great horror vibes in this episode it almost felt like a uh, like a national treasure uh movie this episode did and I, it's kind of cool because they're setting up a disney plus national uh, treasure show so it was kind of cool to see that vibe maybe a little bit more mature in this episode but i can't wait to see where moon knight goes and things that do very much give you some violence is the northman robert eggers newest film in theaters this past weekend and it is damn good i put up a uh, review of it over on my tiktok channel so if you're not following me over there what are you waiting for get over there i do post some content up there if i don't have time to make a youtube video for it but yes the northman is fantastic eggers is definitely three for three his directing in this fantastic cinematography off the freaking chain great uh, Anya Taylor-Joy has, she's probably like number two in this movie. She's fantastic. She plays a very interesting character. And it seems like Eggers has a certain type of character in mind when it comes to Anya Taylor-Joy. And I'm here for it. I'm here to see more of it. She's quickly becoming one of my favorite actresses in Hollywood today. Alexander Skarsgård is amazing in this movie. He's brutal. He's violent. He's subtle at times interestingly enough and he is just jacked to the gills like his freaking shoulder muscles come up to like his chin almost he's just ripped and i feel like it was in his contract to be naked or at least shirtless for at least 75 percent of the movie because he sure is so if you want to see some scars guard abs this is definitely the movie for you nicole kidman plays a role we don't really see from her too often which i thought was fantastic i saw it at the local amc and i thought it was interesting to see that uh you know amc commercial we've all seen a thousand and twelve times and then 20 minutes later we get a very very different version of nicole kidman than what we're used to but overall i thought this movie was fantastic brutal but also has very good story it's not just straight up brutality it's got a very great story involved as well and if you know robert eggers filmmaking you probably knew that going into the film i can see it not being for everybody but for me it's a damn good film one of the best films of the year and it definitely deserves more money at the box office so you should go see the northman if you haven't it's still in theaters you can see it this weekend you can see it this week just go see it and support non 
Marvel, Star Wars, Wizarding World, go support original cinema. That's all I have to say about the North. Jumping on over to another historical figure. The Leprechaun is apparently coming back as Lionsgate is looking to reboot the franchise. It is taking on pitches from writers to somehow reinvigorate the franchise and bring it back into the pop culture lexicon. I find this very interesting because we got that Leprechaun reboot a few years ago, which wasn't terrible, but it was it was it did premiere on a sci-fi channel, so it had a certain budget cap you know it had certain restrictions it could not pull off and it also didn't have warwick davis as the leprechaun i think that's the one thing they need i hope he doesn't feel like he's too old or he's past it get him to play the leprechaun whether it's a reboot or not that man is the leprechaun he knows how to do it perfectly and that's who we want to see don't put it on the sci-fi channel if you're gonna do this and you don't want to put it theatrically, put it on like HBO Max or Netflix or something. Do not put it on network television. Make it have a, a little more budget. Make sure it doesn't feel like it was made for $7 behind a big lot somewhere. Make it feel like an actual movie, not just a cash grab for uh, St. Paddy's Day weekend on the Sci-Fi Channel. I really like the first Leprechaun. I know it's not like fantastic cinema and it was very cheaply made. First film starring Jennifer Aniston, fun fact. Uh, and I actually really enjoy it. I try to watch it every St. Paddy's Day. Some of the sequels are just dumb fun. Like they, they're, they're terrible movies like Leprechaun in Space, Leprechaun in the Hood. Stupid movies, but super fun to watch every couple years. So I'm actually kind of curious to see who gets attached to this Leprechaun reboot. Do they get Warwick Davis to star? What actors or actresses we could see uh, the next jennifer aniston in this movie get her start so i'm curious to see what comes of this whether it's a sci-fi channel thing god i hope not netflix wherever it lands i'm curious to see a revival of the leprechaun franchise jumping on over to a different type of little people Big Mouth over on Netflix has been renewed for Season 7, and Human Resources, the Big Mouth spinoff, has been renewed for Season 2. Of course, I talked about Human Resources uh, a month ago when it came out, and I've always talked about Big Mouth here on the channel. Big, big fan of these shows. I think they're hilarious. I love them. Big Mouth Season 6 will be coming out later this year, so we'll get Season 7 like next year, Human Resources Season 2 next year, and I can't wait to see the expansion of both of these shows. I'm curious to see, I mean, they're animated, so they can go as long as they want, really, especially Human Resources, but I'm curious to see how long this, you know, universe keeps going. This and Stranger Things are probably, like, the only things really keeping my Netflix subscription alive at this point, because the original movies don't really do it for me, and they don't really have any other series that I'm really loving, like originals-wise. They have some shows from other places on there that I like to watch, but originals-wise, they're kind of lacking in content, which kind of explains their big subscriber loss recently, and they keep upping the price, which is stupid, because they have so much competition now that are all cheaper, that all have better content for the most part. So Big Mouth and Human Resources coming back will definitely keep my Netflix subscription alive for another year. So Netflix you done it. You got my money. Now you better take advantage of it and give me some other good stuff outside of Big Mouth and a wave of Ozark coming out this Friday. But that's the final season of Ozark, so we'll have to see what comes in place of that. Now, speaking of animated stuff, we're going to talk about Sony's Into the Spider-Verse. I guess it's called Across the Spider-Verse Part 1 that was supposed to come out in uh, November of this year. It got delayed to June of next year. Just breaking my heart after seeing Morbius, I was really looking forward to a good spider-man related film on the big screen this year but we're not going to get it because it has been delayed to june and then part two has been delayed to like may of 2024 which stinks as well and apparently they're going to really try to expand their sony spider-verse next year because craven is scheduled for january which i don't think anyone's excited for after seeing morbius spider-verse is scheduled for june and then madam webb which i was actually excited for because i like that character i like the cast they have so far is coming out in July, but then I found out it's written by the same guys that wrote Morbius, so that took my excitement and just threw it in the trash for the most part, because, ugh, ugh, their credits, I looked up their credits outside of Morbius, and they all stink, but we're not here to talk about that, we're here to talk about Spider-Verse being delayed, this sucks, I don't know, maybe they need extra time to touch up the animation and make it look just as good as the original did a few years ago, but this stinks, I thought, like, I don't know what other movie Sony even has coming out this year. I thought this would be like their big money maker, but maybe Spider-Man No Way Home made enough money for them that they can kind of just take a whiff 
2022 and uh, put all their big hitters in 2023 and hope for the best. Spider-Verse, I'm super excited for it. Can't wait to see it, no matter how much they got to delay it. As long as the animation's good and it's as great as the first one, I'll be happy. Craven and Madam Web, not too excited for myself. And I can't believe they still haven't formally announced a Venom 3 or a Morbius 2, because that movie's blew its production budget way out of the window so you know we're getting venom 3 we know we're getting morbius 2 craven meta web i don't know what's going on in that side but the spider stuff's great it sucks that it got delayed but if that means it's going to be an even better movie then i'm all for it but if it comes out and it stinks i'll be very disappointed even more so if it came out stunk in this november what are your thoughts on all this week's news stories are you super bummed like me spider-verse got delayed are you looking forward to leprechaun coming back or big mouth universe expanding even more over at netflix what are your thoughts on moon knight and the northman what are your let me know all that down in the comments below make sure you guys subscribe to the channel so we can keep growing this channel out and putting out more content as i continue to try to be a little more consistent here on the channel this week we're gonna have moon knight episode five uh we're gonna have a special video drop on friday so make sure you stay tuned for that and I'm going to try to get a uh, review out of Ozark's final batch of episodes on Sunday. So make sure you stay tuned all for those videos. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you guys right here next time.